country is serving the UE. Mm -hmm. So they can buy whatever ship they want or they can afford or whatever. The thing so, is, we're like all retirees in. Oh, that's the well, life right there. I well, think that's the, focused. The, the lore be before they changed the uh, the depth of the spaceman, right? The the original lore was uh, we were supposed to be uh, the beneficiary of the parents that that fought in the earlier UEE wars and 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 mm -hmm. soldiers, that, and we're the 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 descendants of that beneficiaries of of of, of a civilization in, in ue space passed down to the descendants as beneficiaries mm -hmm. i think that's bunkus <laughs> given the technology that's currently available in the game mm -hmm. there would be those segments of society that were like we do not want to live like this mm. and they would take to the stars and they would spend <laughs> their lives and raise their families <laughs> in space and commune space commune that's true, <laughs> so, that's true. And I, think, I think we'll make his way until you encounter a face hugger place what is your um, name <laughs> Man, so like when I when when we think about it, right? When I think about the game and the future on how they they're developing this thing, right? Like what Abyss what Abyss just mentioned, like two days ago when we were in seventeen two, he said, "Man, they're they're planning to make everything like we're seeing all these props interactable, right?" And now they did an IS like I don't know if it's inside Star Citizen, what's in Star Citizen Live showcasing how they're going to be doing that. So when you think about it, like they will do it in such a way that you can choose to live on a planet and just stay on the planet or if you want to do more exploration you can get a spaceship and leave and i think the it's going to be big enough to allow for people to choose what they want to do right so you know i i remember star citizen one time mentioned that he wants players to have to can just decide to stay on a planet and just farm yeah, he you know? mentioned that uh, a while ago. Mm -hmm. In fact, yeah, that's, yeah, that's old news. That's the that's the goal. That's the intention to where you could be able to, if you want to, like solely operate in space, you could do mm -hmm. that. If you want to uh, just solely operate on planet side and never have to leave that planet, you can still play the game. You should still have that freedom to do so. And I I, I think that's a good direction to go, in, in yeah. my opinion. I want to be a moisture farmer. Moisture <laughs> <laughs> they could give you like when you create your character they could give you an option mm -hmm. that career paths like planetary farmer space miner mm -hmm. space combatant or uh, um, <laughs> it's a terrain mer you know ground pounder marine <laughs> or space <laughs> marine or, you know and then it starts you off in that situation and it's it's different ways to give you different challenges right to work your way up in the game everybody eventually is going to work their way into being a, a, a pilot right? right but let's say you select you want to be a uh, you know, local national guard on the planet so you start off as a ground pounder marine with undersuit armor weapon and you have a series of missions that you go through on the planet you you gain more money and stuff reputations and stuff like that and eventually you'll have opportunities to buy ships and then get off the planet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that actually sounds appealing. they might even yeah they might do that um after they quote unquote release it mm -hmm. that you could you know pretty much um go the legendary difficulty mode start mm -hmm. out with nothing or you might become a farmer and you start off farming and you haven't because you don't have vehicles or ship you have to sell your crop to the local 
market you know and you so you you're making you're trying to make some money that way you might do some adventures around the area explore some caves make more money and eventually uh you start you'll buy a transport to get your goods off the planet and out into the system so you can sell them for a better price out there and then you start working on building your trade empire and you already have a farm as a base of operations to work from right that sounds really cool and then you're probably stacked that with like starting like a starting like objective like hey like you say like you want to be a farmer or something like that so they you know you kind of have like stats or reputation that builds and kind of multiplies with that as far as you know a farmer would have different stats starting stats mm-hmm. than somebody that kind of just got born in space or wanted to be a space marine mm-hmm. and you have you know combat combat and statistics or anything like that so that'd be it'd be really cool like there's a lot of things that could be potentially stacked onto just that concept right yeah when you interact like you go to another system and you start to interact with different sta- stations if you have that trading rep background you might you'll get offered missions that someone who's a space marine background won't get and he'll get missions offered to him that the trader won't get I like that, man. I like that. I like that. It, it, it's it's there, there's so much that they could do based on how they're they're, they're developing this game, and, and and like we have to like I have to we have to commend the group of guys that Chris Roberts, well whichever department sent them out to do the whole planetary tech, the, the procedure generation for planets, right? Like they enabled all this, <laughs> you know. Initially, we were just supposed to load into a planet. It's supposed to be a loading screen like Star Starfield, right? So, like the fact that they're able to you can seamlessly fly down to planets, it just open the whole the entire game to not just a space sim, but it could be a life sim. You know? Yeah. yeah. Give it up. Give it up for the interns. Yeah, <laughs> the interns. <laughs> nice, nice, yeah. nice, yeah, nice. I think pretty much like. As they continue to raise money, they were able to hire, like, you know, higher experienced talents. Mm-hmm. And I think that's partly probably why they keep rebuilding this game <laughs> so much. Yeah. It's yeah. like the more money they had get fundraising, the more, like, um, you know, experienced people. I mean, there was a point that they hired, like, a lot of uh, CryEngine engineers when cry engine was basically was about to um, you know close his doors um, right. and then you know as as more talents they started to be able to attract and you know, they would end up like saying you know this is a good idea it's working fine but you know if we do it this way oh man like we could do this and that and this <laughs>